The town of Young in central New South Wales, like most country towns, is not supplied with natural gas. The Pipeline Authority, whose control centre is just outside Young, carried out trials of methods which might be used to reduce the cost of construction of small diameter pipelines to supply towns like Young. trials concentrated on the two most expensive aspects of pipeline construction, joining pipes together and burying them underground. Pipelines for natural gas are usually welded manually. This machine makes pipe joints without welding. The joint it produces is known as Zaplock. One end of the pipe is belled out by forcing it onto a steel mandrel. The other end is prepared by rolling a groove to hold a sealant. When the two pipe ends are pushed together, a leak tight joint is formed. In the cut section of a joint, the sealant can be seen filling the rolled groove. The trials of the method were extended to construction of a kilometre of small diameter pipeline to allow full assessment of the method in field use. The mandrel is now replaced with clamping dies to allow the machine to be used to assemble the pipeline. Pipes were taken from a trailer Sealant was applied and then the ends were pushed together. The method proved to be very rapid. The kilometre took only three quarters of an hour with a crew of five averaging more than a joint per minute. When constructing pipelines, it is often necessary to break the continuous pipe. The joints between continuous length are called tie-ins and must often be made in awkward locations adjacent to roads and creeks. The Zaplock machine is used to make this tie-in. The trials also included tests of other methods of joining small pipes. This automatic tungsten arc welder is suitable for small diameter thin wall pipes. It took two minutes to complete a joint. Thank you. 
Before the pipe can be buried, the protective coating, in this case polyethylene, must be inspected. When a floor is discovered, it can be repaired with a primer and tape. To protect the uncoated area adjacent to the joints, heat shrink sleeves can be used. The heat of the flame causes the stretched polythene to return to its original size, sealing the pipe from corrosion. With the completion of the coating, the pipe is ready for burial. To use the experience gained in burying telecommunications cables by ploughing, the authority invited Telecom Australia to use its large cable plough to plough the trial pipe. Before ploughing, the ground is ripped to reduce the forces needed for ploughing and to break up any rocks below the surface. To achieve a ploughing depth of 900 millimetres, the ripper must be set to nearly 1200 millimetres. After the ripper has been replaced with the ploughing equipment, the free end of the pipe is drawn through the plough and anchored. powdered talc is used to lubricate the coated pipe as it passes through the plough. Plowing is possible through any material which can be ripped. In rocky ground, the speed of plowing is reduced. Thank <laughs> you. 
An alternative to steel pipe in small diameters is aluminium, which, because it is manufactured by extrusion, can be supplied in continuous coils up to two kilometers long. The cable plough is ideally suited to ploughing coiled pipe. To join each coil to the previous one, an explosive welding technique is used. One end of the pipe is expanded hydraulically. The other end is fitted with a shaped sleeve. And the joint is wound with explosive cord. A detonator is connected and the joint is made. Ready, set, fire! The coiled pipe ploughs easily with the tension on the drum maintained to prevent the pipe from kinking. In easy ground, the plough reached speeds of five kilometres an hour. After the ploughing tractor has passed, only a small amount of cleanup is required before the land returns to its rural use. The Pipeline Authority acknowledges the assistance provided in the trials by pipe suppliers, tube makers of Australia and Alcan. Also, that of PA International and AJ Lucas Constructions, Telecom and the Commonwealth Government.